Ford's Mustang, the success car of the 60s? It's not likely. But on the other hand, stranger things have happened. What about the 70s? Here's a car from the 70s, Barracuda. You recognize the name. Everything else is new. 1970, new. Now compare the 70 Mustang. There's really no comparison. Barracuda is sleek, like the 70s, sleek and low. Barracuda is over a half inch lower than Mustang, over three inches wider. Barracuda has wider track, over an inch wider up front, almost three inches wider in the rear. Add torsion bar front springs and leaf rear springs, and it's no wonder Barracuda grabs the road like a Grand Prix winner. That sleekness shows up up front, too. Barracuda really makes it. Sleekness that sweeps from the hood right up over Barracuda's hidden windshield wipers. Sweeping, man. Here's Mustang with the look of the 60s. Those naked wiper arms have no place to hide. Day and night, Barracuda comes at you with the new look of the 70s. Sleek grill by day. Owlish amber eyes by night. Amber parking lights that glow in the grill. Two looks at Mustang. The looks are old. Single headlights are new. Tiny lights glow below. Barracuda's new recessed hood latches snugly behind a stationary body panel, sleek and rugged. Mustang's familiar hood projects forward into the wind. There's no supporting panel up front. Incidentally, Barracuda offers three distinct hoods for 70. The performance hood is standard on Cuda models, except Hemi Cuda, which gets the shaker hood standard. Every buyer gets to do his thing. That shaker hood is also optional on the Cuda 340 and Cuda 440 six barrel. The quivering cold air power dome sucks in dense outside air for more powerful fuel charges when the driver opens the system. That shaker hood turned me on. The shaker, that's a wild dance. Mustang also offers a shaker hood with its Ram Air engine and an imitation scoop on the Mach 1. Uh, with the look of the 60s. Standard engines for non-performance models compare like this. The Barracuda buyer gets more horsepower, 25 more in the 6, 10 more in the V8. Even the economy chap likes to know he's got more go under the hood when he buys a sports-type car. For top performance, Mustang offers a 428 cubic inch V8 rated at 335 horsepower, and the new limited production Boss 429 rated at 375. Barracuda's big three, the 440 with 375 horsepower, the 446 barrel with 390 horses and Hemi Cuda with a roaring 425 start where Mustang leaves off. That's a wipeout. Both Barracuda and Mustang offer three speed and four speed manual transmission with floor mounted shifters, fully synchronized to let you downshift to low without clashing gears and a three speed automatic. The pistol grip shifter on Barracuda's four on the floor is a real grabber contoured to fit the hand like a glove. 
and there's a reverse warning light. Mustang has a regular T-handle and no warning light. And only Barracuda offers a slapstick shifter for the automatic. Put it in drive and the transmission shifts automatically. But for quick manual shifting, just put it in one, that's low. Wind it up till the power peaks out. Then, slap it forward into second with the palm of your hand. The shift gate stops it. When she peaks out in second, slap it into high and you're off to the races. The shift gate again stops it in high. No need to look at the shifter. Mustang doesn't offer anything like it. You can shift the automatic manually, but watch what you're doing. There's no shift gate. That means feeling your way through the shifts, and that's slower. For night driving, the indicator on Barracuda's automatic shifter changes colors. Green for go, first, second, and drive. Red for reverse. Amber for neutral or park. Looks like the 70s. Barracuda's flush door handles. Looks like the 70s. Stylish domed roof with built-in roll bar. Looks like the 70s. Cement on vinyl side protection moldings, optional. Looks like the 70s. Elastomeric color keyed bumpers, optional. Don't dent, scratch, or mar. Looks like the 70s. Door lock levers in armrest. Looks like the 70s. Time delay light goes on when door is open so you can see the controls. Looks like the 70s. Color keyed controls for headlights, wipers, and panel dimmer. Looks like the 70s. Overhead consulate with warning lights and plush headliner. Standard on Grand Coupe hardtop. Looks like the 70s. Barracuda and Mustang both have body contoured high back bucket seats with built in head restraints. But only Barracuda offers an optional 160 position spring assisted seat adjuster for the driver's seat. Barracuda also offers these seats with soft, natural leather. Standard on Grand Coupe, optional on other models. Mustang doesn't offer leather. Just kick the release and fold the seat back forward in Barracuda. It's that simple. No need to keep the button pressed in, and there's no stooping. Mustang does it the old way. Stoop, turn, hold, and fold. Stoop, turn, and hold the release lever. Reach up and fold the seat back down. Every time you get in and out? No place to rest your elbows in Mustang's rear seat, either. Barracuda has rests formed in the trim panels. Compare Barracuda's concealed safety belt retractors with Mustang's projection jobs that you either step over or trip over. With the standard V8, Barracuda leaves all kinds of room to change spark plugs, if that's your bag. Ford claims it's the 1970 thing to do in ads for Maverick. But look at the poor Mustang, like sardines in a can and no can opener. That big can at the side is the cover for Mustang's front coil spring. Barracuda's torsion bars are far below, and they give a better ride, too. Now, here's something you won't believe. Mustang's gas tank, right in the trunk, just like Falcon's since the early 60s. A leak around the hose in this filler neck, and you have gasoline in the trunk. A bad scene, even for the 60s. So no matter how you look at them, from any angle, any place, any time. Barracuda leads the way into the 70s, into the moving generation. Barracuda makes it for 1970.